This is a demonstration of the Max Purse drilling tool, formerly known as Penadrill. Set up for a function test at Penetrator's facility in Red Deer. The tools are connected via a high pressure hose to one of Penetrator's pumping units parked just outside the shop. The first segment is the control section, followed by the motor section, then the drill section, and at the end, the mill section. Most of the visible functions occur at the mill section, so we will focus on that location. Zooming in closer, we see the gold-colored mill cutter, which is used to drill the hole in the steel casing. And just above the cutter, we see the exit hole of the bit guide. The rock drill bit and flexible drill stem will come out of this hole and pass through the hole in the casing to drill the communication tunnel into the formation. This is a piece of common 139.7 millimeter or 5 and 1 half inch oil well casing with some existing penadrill holes from previous testing. We will slip it onto the mill section and drill a new hole. We have marked the casing with a white circle to show the approximate location of the new hole. The operator has engaged the pumping equipment and is beginning to build pressure in the control section, which will cause it to shift and direct flow to the mill section. The milling cutter will index up. And as the operator continues to increase pressure, the cutter will begin extending outwards to cut the hole in the casing. During this procedure, there is considerable flow from the hydraulic motor exhaust and from fluid used to cool the mill cutter and flush away cuttings. It will take about two minutes to cut the hole, so we will edit out a portion of this procedure. The pilot tip of the mill cutter will come through the casing first followed shortly by the main body of the cutter. As the cutter breaks through and completes the hole, cooling and flushing fluid will begin to spray out. When the hole is complete, the operator will decrease pumping pressure and the cutter will be retracted. Continuing to decrease pressure will activate the indexing function, moving the mill cutter down and bringing the exit hole of the bit guide into alignment with the hole in the casing. The operator will now increase pressure to extend the flexible drill stem and rock bit through the hole we've just made. For the purposes of this demonstration, the drill stem will be extended for only a short distance since there is no lateral support out in the open air. Under actual conditions, the drill stem receives support from the tunnel it is just drilled. Pressure will now be decreased to shift the control section and then increase for the final time of the sequence to retract the rock bit back into the tool. The drill stem rotates as it is retracting and fluid flow is maintained out the rock bit. We will now repeat portions of the previous demonstration and add in the actual drilling of a mortar test target. Again. We will use a piece of common oil well casing, and as before, we have circled the approximate location of the new hole to be milled in the casing sample. Now, a test target of high compressive strength cement mortar, approximately one meter long, will be positioned adjacent to the casing and strapped to the tool body. The casing milling sequence is underway. Again, portions of this demonstration will be edited. The operator has completed milling the hole in the casing. He will now begin drilling the tunnel in the target. This is all being done in a quiet and gentle manner. The cuttings are continually being washed back to the annular space between the tool and the casing. The tunnel drilling sequence has been underway for about three minutes, and the rock bit will be coming through the target soon. As the bit exits the target, we will zoom in on the drill stem and the rock bit for a closer look. The tunnel diameter is approximately three quarters of an inch. It will be flushed clean and is not compacted or damaged in any way. The operator will now retract the drill stem and rock bit back into the tool. In a downhole situation, the tool could now be repositioned in the well bore. There would be no pressure on the system while the tool was being moved. 
Moving the target aside, we can see the fresh hole in the casing and the entrance to the tunnel in the target. The target has a radius of 12 centimeters or about 5 inches and the tunnel stayed well within that radius over its 1 meter length. At this point the control section has been reset and would be ready to begin the next casing milling operation if so desired. For additional information, please contact Penetrators Canada Incorporated at this address.